This video is about one of my favorite topics. This is the cranial nerve number 9, 10, and 11, or glossopharyngeal, vagus, and spinal accessory nerves. They made it like this because uh, basically these three nerves have something in common. They all come out from the same place, the jugular foramen. So this is important to remember and I will repeat it throughout the video. So let this uh, sink in. First of all, the glossopharyngeal nerve. The glossopharyngeal nerve uh, begins by the lesser petrosal nerve joining, joining it at the pyramid at the skull. So the lesser petrosal joins the glossopharyngeal nerve at the skull at the pyramid and then it comes out from the jugular foramen from the anterior part of the jugular foramen then it follows the stylopharyngeus muscle we can see here the stylopharyngeus muscle and the glossopharyngeal nerve following it and then uh, as it goes down it picks up efferent fibers from the tongue including the taste and the pharynx the glossopharyngeal nerve has branches. It has uh, the tympanic branch, the carotid sinus branch, the pharyngeal, lingual, and tonsillar branches. Now, the carotid body and sinus right here, uh, they are innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. This is uh, something important to remember. Um, this is a baroreceptor, okay? The carotid sinus is a baroreceptor in case uh, there is a pressure, there is an increase or a decrease uh, of pressure. Uh, this, this little thing right here senses it and sends an impulse to fix the situation. But this is uh, more for, for physiology. So in the bifurcation of uh, the common uh, carotid artery, we have uh, this uh, carotid sinus that is being innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Now let's continue to the vagus. The vagus has uh, the longest path from the cranial nerves and its name basically comes from Latin, also called uh, wandering nerve. Uh, it's called like this because it's the, it has a very vast distribution throughout the body. Like we agreed, the vagus nerve comes out from the jugular foramen. It is again both visceral and somatic nerve, just like the glossopharyngeal. The vagus goes uh, through the carotid sheath and uh, to the root of the neck and supplies the palate, including the taste. Uh, it has a little part that supplies the, the taste, the pharynx and the larynx and it continues to the thorax but this is not for the, this video uh, because it's not included in the head and neck and we can see the branches so the branches uh, you can kind of remember it by maps are kind of so we have the meningeal, the auricular, the pharyngeal, the superior, inferior and external laryngeal and the recurrent laryngeal now the recurrent laryngeal we have uh, right and left recurrent laryngeal but pay attention that they are not symmetrical they asymmetrical now this thing happens because of the rotation of the midgut during the embryonic development so we have a paired structure the vagus nerve is a paired structure uh, but it has a different uh, recurrent laryngeals. So the right recurrent laryngeal wraps wraps around uh, the subclavian artery, the right subclavian artery, while the left recurrent laryngeal wraps around the aorta, the aorta, not the they they they, they are not symmetric. Okay, I can't stress this enough. Now let's continue to the spinal accessory nerve. This nerve is nothing special, except for its uh, little interesting uh, origin okay so basically it starts from the first five or six segments of the spinal cord and it joins the vagus temporarily in the skull and as it passes through the jugular foramen again it passes through the jugular foramen uh, they sep it separates from the from the vagus 
Now, one, one thing to remember, this is only somatic. So out of these three nerves, we have the spinal accessory nerve being only somatic and the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerves being both somatic and visceral. So spinal accessory, only somatic. Now, the spinal accessory nerve, as it comes out from the jugular foramen, it descends uh, along the internal carotid artery and it penetrates and innervates the sternocleidomastoid muscle. So the sternocleidomastoid muscle is being penetrated and innervated by the spinal accessory nerve. You can even see it on the cadaver quite well because this is quite a thick nerve and it penetrates and innervates the, the sternocleidomastoid and then it continues uh, posteriorly to the trapezius muscle also penetrating and innervating it.